and welcome to our difficult question report from Joint Forces for Solar US briefing in San Francisco. Today's difficult question is how can we ensure sustainable growth for solar PV business and market in US and California despite uncertain macroeconomic conditions? So as we could see in the Joint Forces for Solar panel discussion, a very significant part actually dealt with policy. So there was a strong call to have sustainable long-term policies in place that create the certainty so that investors can invest. Um, another important factor was of course prices. How can we bring prices down? So one uh, call that was attached to that was streamlining processes. Make it really easy. I know it's it's not a lot of new news but it's 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 really critical and you can hear that all the way from the solar installers to uh, the manufacturers so that needs to be um, streamlined and eased um, price transparency goes with it so if you look at the price differences between Europe and the US you really have to find out okay what well, why is that because it's not the components so it's a lot to do with the soft costs and, and, and others and that's a big problem for the market a big big challenge um, the panel ended a little bit with a positive view though because we do know that there's so much demand of energy and we discussed that and it's about solar it is about solar that needs to exploit this potential it is easy and it should be a no-brainer it should be part of every day's uh, every person's life when coming home looking at how much power have i generated or even used based on my own pv plan so that is the future we are looking at and that's the potential for solar and that's going to be like that despite uh, these challenges we have in the market but it, it calls for the industry and the policy working hand in hand to ease these processes and then there is a very bright future for solar in the US. In our days, as you said, we are facing a, a quite a strong financial crisis. Nevertheless, we are um, in energy, we are in renewable energy and we are in infrastructure. So something which every government in the world is uh, needs to have to grow sustainable, to guarantee their country, their nation to grow. Therefore, we are in the right business. Therefore, in solar, which is still free of charge, the sun is shining every day. And, and therefore, I think, no, I'm, I'm sure we are in, in the right business. We can guarantee by uh, knowing that we every day, every day, we increase our demand of energy. So um, we are walking away from uh, nuclear power. We are going to look into sustainable, uh, business which is renewable energy and which is solar. Of course, uh, I don't know so much about California because I take care of New Jersey, Pennsylvania and Delaware, uh, but I think the answers are similar. Uh, I think one of the big things, one of the big messages the solar industry needs to get is that it needs to invest more in policy. Uh, companies should have uh, uh, policy staffers, uh, employees who work on policy full time, uh, hire lobbyists, hire lawyers, and most of all support the local solar energy industry associations. Uh, support the local groups, support the national groups. They have to spend more money on these things because we're an industry that runs on policy. We've got to get serious about spending on policy. Uh, now besides that, we really have to start looking at what are the right policies and what are the wrong policies. And uh, in our area, we've seen a lot about uh, what are the wrong policies. We've had policies that have literally killed a very vibrant market in Pennsylvania. That, that market at one point was about the fifth or sixth largest market in the country. It is now dead. It is gone. It's a smoking crater. So. That obviously was a wrong policy. In New Jersey, we have a very similar policy, and it's on the brink of disaster right now. We just went through a process of, of going through heroic efforts just to get a rescue bill, and it turned out the rescue we got was wonderful, but it's only temporary. So we do need policy reform. Uh, to some extent, we've been pushing for the wrong policies. We've got, to, we've got to start pushing for the right ones or invent new ones, and we're in the process of doing that, uh, inventing whole new policy frameworks that can work for the long term, not, not with a boom and bust cycle. You know, really, ultimately, the challenge that we face is one that's rooted in education and uh, competing with the intense level of corporate dollars that are coming into the marketplace right now uh, into the state houses in particular that are working to either maintain the status quo, I mean, for example, in the United States some eight months after Fukushima, 
we've now licensed the creation of the next nuclear plant in the, our country, the first time in 30 years, and it's on the heels of this incredible disaster. This is a symptom of the amount of corporate money that is flowing into public dialogue, which should be public dialogue, and it's actually become quite private, and it's tilted heavily toward the interests of very few people who benefit from these large, brittle energy systems. Uh, power to the people is where our focus needs to be. Um, uh, uh, back in the depression of the 1930s, uh, President Roosevelt had the saying of uh, a chicken in every pot because Americans were literally in bread lines. We now need to move that to a solar system on every rooftop. And in order to get to that point, we need to get policies in place that will allow for the inherent investment that's required in the hardware to be re to realize a financial return through a stable uh, incentive structure that allows homeowners as well as small and large businesses to uh, capitalize their investment. So I think the key to that is is consistent policies uh, at the state level and um, a level playing field, essentially. Because right now, solar energy is being forced to play by different rules than other forms of energy. Um, there are subsidies for all forms of energy. So when solar is, is singled out as getting subsidies and there's no recognition, for example, that oil gets subsidies and coal gets subsidies and nuclear gets subsidies. But solar is is said well is told well you guys shouldn't have to have any subsidies. Um, that's not a level playing field. So I'm fine with taking away the other subsidies. Uh, solar will do just fine on an, on a level playing field. And so consistent long-term policies, long-term financing, like other forms of energy are able to get. Uh, as well, these are not these are very simple asks. That's all we really need. Well, we need to make solar simple. So it's a simple technology, and we need to make sure that uh, we make it simple for customers to adopt the technology. And that means transparent pricing. That means consistent policies that don't change over time, or with a change from uh, one party to the next in Congress. So transparency on pricing, and uh, removing barriers to adopting solar, which would mean uh, making interconnection, streamlined, fast-track uh, possibilities for more projects, and also uh, making it easier to finance projects. So we're in a regime where we're shifting back to finding tax equity players, and uh, that can complicate the deals. Um, making it more difficult and more costly to finance projects. So we can find more liquid um, financing mechanisms, then we'll see a quicker adoption of solar here. But, you know, the, there's a lot of promise in the industry. There are challenges for manufacturers right now, but uh, we're definitely on the right track in terms of system installation pro prices dropping. And, um, you know, I think we're headed in the right direction. I think the most important thing in these times is access to finance. So the willingness from the banks and other financial institutes to provide continuous financing streams debt for the projects. On the other hand, um, drivers for success in the utility scale um, business is the, the need, the upcoming need for more power generated in California. And on the other hand, if you look at the residential system, we see a tremendous growth of third-party owned systems. 50% of the systems that are installed this year are financed by leasing or similar solutions. So companies that are active in that market should bring finance, should bring clear, simple solutions that can be understood by the several target groups. And then we see a sustainable growth in the Californian market, higher than 50% in the next years in our average scenario in the utility segment as well as in the residential rooftop segment. Get down, get down, get down.